In this lecture, I'm going to review all the very basic regents level solution quantitative values that we need in order to evaluate how much and how many particles of solutes are dissolved in a solution. So let's get started with molarity. It is the by far the most important and the most used of all of our measured values. Now they measure what? They measure solubility. So molarity has some synonyms. We have big M or the word molar or the word molarity. I could say I have a 2M solution. That's saying I have a 2 molar solution. Or I can say that, hey, the molarity is 2. All of these are the same. And they all do what? They all measure, and they all measure solubility, which is the ability for solute particles to be dissolved and make a solution. If you have a solution, you have an aqueous, right? An aqueous means we have um, attractive forces between the solvent like water and let's say ions. In this case, it's molecule ion attractions, but we have attractive forces between. Okay, now, so when we do these formulas, okay, we have to think about what does molarity represent? Well, in table T of the reference table, so looking at our reference tables, we go down to table T, which is the last page, usually, and we're going to find that we have something called concentration, which represents how much solute particles are dissolved by the solvent. And what we have is molarity is moles of solute over a liter of solution. So it's right there for your viewing. They're using molarity, but obviously it's also written as a big M or the word molar. All right. So back to these questions. Very simply, what do they give me? Well, I know that molarity, big M, is moles of solute, okay, which is a substance being dissolved over the liter of solution. All right, it's not a liter of just water. It's the entire solution. Very important you understand that. Now, so how do I do all of this? Well, very simple. Okay, what is the molarity? They're looking for this value here. So what I do is, hey, it's equal to what? Well, moles, in this case, they have two moles of their NaCl, which is the solute, and I have, in this case, one liter of solution. So pretty simple stuff. I plug in, put this in your calculator. Of course, you don't need to, and you get a 2M solution. So it's a 2M, or the molarity is 2. All right, so pretty simple stuff, pretty straightforward plug-in. Number two typically is a little more difficult because you look at what they give you. They said, what is the molarity? We know, again, molarity is moles of solute over liter of solution. But they're saying, what is the concentration? What's, what molarity represents if I've got a solution containing 100 grams of calcium carbonate? Well, there's no grams here. But you should know that grams and moles are interconvertible, right? So we've got to take our 100 grams of calcium carbonate and we've got to convert this into moles as we've done a million times over. Get rid of grams, I want mole and one mole is how many grams? Well, I've got to do what we call a formula mass and as we do a formula mass we have one calcium, one times 40 is 40, I've got one C, one times 12 is 12, I have three oxygens, 3 times 16 is 48. Add that together and you get 100 grams per mole. So I got to do some extra work here. So of course 100 grams goes right here. And that's my converting factor, my formula mass. Obviously I have one mole, which I plug in right here. And of course they said I have a liter. A thousand milliliters is a liter. For those that don't know, a thousand milliliters to get rid of the unit that we, that we want to get rid of on the bottom. And I know that for every 1,000 of these, I have one liter. So obviously, I'm dividing by 1,000, and I get one. Obviously, one divided by one hmm, is one molar. Okay, So 
This one required a couple of different couple of steps here. You had to convert your, the grams given into moles. You had to do a formula mass first. Okay, so a couple of steps, but we've done all these. Number three, what's the molarity of a one liter solution containing 0.25 moles? Well, I say at this point, really? Well, if you have 0.25 moles of my solute, that's a substance being dissolved, and I have a liter of solution, last time I checked, it's 0.25 m. Hmm, take a break, breaks over. Continuing on, number four, what's the molarity of a thousand milliliter solution? Well, the molarity is big M, and guess what? It's a one liter solution. 20 grams. I gotta convert this to moles. So I've got 20 grams of NaOH, easy. How many grams equals one mole? Well, 23 plus 16 plus one. Okay, last time I checked, that is 40. That's the formula mass, 40 grams per mole. Okay, so 20 divided by 40 is 0.5, right? Grams go bye-bye. We've got moles, and we plug these moles right here, 0.5 moles. Divide by 1, you get 0.5 m. Wow. Okay, what is the molarity of a 1-liter solution containing 116 grams of NaCl? Same kind of problem. Okay, so molarity again is moles over liters. This time... I know that the formula mass, because I went to the formula mass party, is 58 right, grams per mole. How did I do that? I've seen this so many times, but 23 plus 35 is 58. So I get 58 grams. Isn't 116, in this case, isn't this 116 grams? Get rid of grams. I know it's 58 grams per one mole. I get two moles. That goes on top here and I divide by one liter. Wow. I get, my friends here, a two molar solution. All right. Number six and final, what's the molarity of a 0.4 grams of NaOH? Now, this is a very dilute, okay? This is going to be a dilute solution. But I still need to know how dilute. Dilute is just a what? A quality, qualitative. So again, molarity is equal to moles over solute. Well, I have to convert my 0.4 grams of NaOH, and I know from previous work that uh, 40 grams equals one mole. Well, this four over 40 would be one uh, tenth. This is 100. This is 0 0.01 moles. Don't be afraid of a small number. So I take that 0.0 one moles, and I put this over here, and it's over what? You've guessed it, one liter. So we get a molarity to be 0.01 big M, or we'd say the molarity, many ways you can say it, is equal to 0.01. The bottom line here, okay, is that we have a molarity is nothing more than a concentration term that tells me how much stuff exactly in moles is in my solution, which is what I'm going to need when I do stoichiometry with this. Okay, number seven, introducing a, uh, another type of concentration term, and this is percent by mass. So percent by mass of a solution. Okay. So how do I, what do I do here? Well, percent by mass of solution means you're going to have a part over total times 100. Now, the part that we're going to deal with, of course, is the mass of the solute over the total mass of the solution. Okay? Times 100, of course. That's how this works. So in the first question is, how many grams of solute are in a 1,000 gram solution? So they have, my friends in chemistry, they have the total grams of solution right here. That's my total. They, told, they said that. So that goes on the bottom. That's my 100 grams, or in this case, 1,000 grams of solution. That is, of course, the solute, the salt, plus the solvent, the water, collectively together. Now, they said it was a 20% Okay, 20%. Now, there's many ways you can solve for this to find how much, 
Notice it's a part of a total, part of a total times 100 gives you the percentage. Okay, you could solve for x, but I would also think that you can think about it like this. This will all work out to be what's 20 percent of a thousand, right? It's 20 percent. You move the decimal place two places, so 0 0.2 times a thousand. And of course, you're going to get 200, okay, grams. That means 200 grams of my thousand gram solution is made up of the salt, of the solute. Okay, you could set it up this way and use this formula, but you essentially be doing the same thing. How many grams of water are there? Well, if we're dealing with water, if it's 20% salt, there's only two things in the mixture. Remember, this is a homogeneous mixture. Okay, well, that means we have 80% water. So find 80% of 1,000. So you can take your 0.8, and you could times that by 1,000. Or what you can do is subtract the 200 from 1,000. Either way, you're going to get 600 grams of the entire 1,000. Oops, I mean 800 grams. So simple, you can get it wrong. 800 grams, I can do the math. 800 grams is with the water because that's 80%. Okay, and all I did was take the 0 0.8 times 1,000 and I get my 800 grams. Or I could take the 200 and that's subtracted from the what total, which is 1,000, and that would have to be 800 as well. Pretty simple stuff. But I will say there's a trap here. People tend to get this one wrong a lot because they think they want to do mass of the solution over the mass of the water when it's the total mass of the solution. So like number eight, if I asked you to do it real fast and said, hey, what is number eight? And you said, oh, I got 15 grams because it's a percent by mass over, oh, 100, 100 grams of the water, the grams of the water is the solution. And I get a lot of people that would say, oh, this is 15%. And you would get this wrong. Okay, it's not 15% because it is 15 grams. It's the mass of your solute over the total mass of the solution, which is what? The solute plus the solvent. Okay, then times 100. So that'd be 15 over 115. I believe that's 13%. Well, let me just check in my later calc here. So 15 divided by 115 is, yeah, about 13%. Times 100, and we would get the real answer to be 13%. All right, remember, it's a total mass of the solution. All right, now, I'll leave number 9 alone for homework. Let's go on to number 10. Number 10 mentions something called part per million. Now, part per million is what we use for very, very dilute solutions. Very dilute. Why? Because if we have a very dilute solution, the percent by mass, which by the way, percent by mass, I believe, is a part of 100, right? We have a part over total, which gives us a ratio, and we times that by 100. So to me, a percentage is a part per 100. So if we're dealing with a part per million, all you're doing is changing this to 10 to the 6, which is a fancy way of writing a million. That's a part per million. Now, why would we want to do this? Well, because if I've got very, very dilute quantities, I want numbers to reflect um, some values I can wrap my head, hands around, pretty much. Part per million is the same thing as the part per hundred, or I would say a, um, what do you say, um, a percentage. So the same thing applies. What is the part per million of a solution that has 0.23 grams of lead? So again, this is not a molarity, so we use the mass of the lead, which is my solute, 0.23 grams in 20 liters of water. Now, it's the mass of the water. We, can know, we know that the density of water is 1 gram per every 1 milliliter. If, got if you've got 20 li liters, okay, well, we know that 1,000 milliliters is a liter. They give me 1,000 milliliters, so we would have... I'm sorry, that'd be 2,000, right? And of course, if I've got 20 liters, I've got 20,000 milliliters. How do I know that? Well, do your conversion if you can't see. 20 liters 
get rid of liters. For every one liter, there's what? A thousand milliliters. No sense trying to understand it without doing conversions, and you're going to get your 20,000 milliliters. Now, because I know that for every what? One gram, and I can continue this on if you want, for every what? One gram or one milliliter, there's one gram, I get 20,000 grams. And I'll convert this to what? Uh, we'll keep it in grams. Yeah. So we keep this in grams. In my mind, we wanted uh, go, milliliters go, we got grams. So of course, we got 20,000 grams. This is the density of water. In any case, put this down here, and we've got 20,000 grams. Now, in truth, isn't that 20,000 grams plus 0.23? It is, and if you were to forget, you probably wouldn't have much of a difference because that is such a small number. It's insignificant based on the size, but you really should put that there. If this is the water, you have to add the solute too. It's a part over total, total mass of the solution. Now, instead of timesing it by 100, you times it by a million. Okay, and what you get here is 11.49 or 11.5, and the unit is ppm. How many places in the world can you say PPM and make that sound like it's meaningful? Now, we also have part per billion, part per trillion, and we'll see that later this week, next week as well. So that's the answer. Notice that's a number you can wrap your hand around, whereas if I was to use the raw number again, you would get, if you just did this value here, this value is uh, point. Zero 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 one one two three four five okay four um and they're crossing that one one four nine that's the fraction so if you were to make that into a percentage then you just take two zeros away and it'd still be point zero zero one which is one thousandth. So if you move it six zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, now you've got a manageable number that people like to deal with. That's the reason why we use it, but we use it for dilute solutions. Okay, any case, but that was interesting, sure. Uh, number 11, you're on your own. So please finish those out. Use the key. Hope that helped.